Lots of Echeveria. Look at all the gorgeous color. So I don't even know uh, what the camera is capturing. But anyway, so this one is supposed to survive uh, the winter frost. This ones, I'm already guaranteeing you they will survive. I am going to walk you through my covered zone so this is still open to the element where some part still gets rained on so on these shelves are mostly frost hardy plants some are fairly new like that uh, opalina and also that other opalina there as I've just found out they're quite hardy so I'm putting them out here that one is also a new plant. The label says frost hardy. They're protected from the element but still also exposed at the same time. Up the top there I have that Crassula ovata. That one there is quite sensitive to the frost. So that's been growing out in the open in my covered zone. This is what I mean by my covered zone. So they're not really covered, but they're still sort of partly or partially protected. Uh, little babies like this. This is so gorgeous. I just want to show this to you. That's so cute, so small. That's only a, an acacia pond. Uh, Echeveria acacia pond, but it's so cute. So salt and pepper shaker. Ionium that nearly melted three years ago so this has actually experienced three winters so first winter got hit by the frost therefore uh, the stem bent and I left it where it nearly fallen but then it came back and then now it's become frost hardy and so that's why I leave it now and hasn't been affected by the frost at all. Now this one here is Ionium Magnum. I actually got this one about a year ago. So this would have to be the second winter for this Ionium. Quite large. And another Ionium Decorum or Red Edge Ionium. This one Guster Aloe Cosmo very very frost hardy I already taken a lot of babies from that one that's act one of them are actually left out exposed to the element the sun and the frost and it's doing really well as well this one is my second crassula falcata the first one I had actually grew quite big and it's been growing in this position and it was doing fine for two winters and the third winter last year I put it out into the open like on this left hand side so this is now right here where I put it there and it died so I got another one last year well this is a new one and then now I'm leaving it here and to acclimatize basically and hope that it doesn't die on me on the left hand side here that gets rained on are a few years old but a couple of them are only new like those three there so it's one two three they're fairly new so I still put it here even though that's an aloe the other aloe got before died minus 10 the same one but then now this one is even flowering so you can see it's flowering that Echeveria papas rose crested now these are all different plants that have survived a couple of winters 
the one in the bottom here is a saibo cactus that I've had for many years so it's about 10 year old or 10 years old this plant and I've already taken so many cuttings from it and look it's flowering so I just keep that there under there and behind me so I've got Kalankowi that at the end of autumn I actually took that inside inside the house where it's all protected and nice and warm and it started getting some mealybugs and mold and so I brought it out here a few days ago but I put it right on the top so we've had minus four while it's sitting on top there and it's still alive it hasn't been affected by the frost at all so I'm leaving it there same with that Crassula ovata that's all nice and red that one actually the mother is over on the right hand side here I'm just gonna do this slowly because so you can see the plants I've got here that have survived the frost so I got lots of Hoya in that corner so that is the mother Crassula ovata that I've inherited from my mom and it's staying green because it's tucked in in this corner and it's not getting any sun at all so the ones that are exposed to the sun are so that is nice and red so as you can see now it's a windy day but this is actually perfect for doing this video so you can see the colors better and also now in here I've got this is now second winter for these plants that's in this revolving sauce come pot that I turn it into a pot and on this side here this gets wet this wall here gets wet when it rains and let's check out the plants that I've got here so Pakipaitum hukiri has been exposed to the element for a few years now the first year, this is the first year uh, that I've actually got some growing out in my 50 zone over there and it's all nice and red so I'm torturing the babies that I actually got from this one this is Pachyveria blue haze that I just acquired this year and it's got a baby it's actually very frost hardy as well but this one I'm keeping here because of that baby I've got another one that I'm supposed to bring into here that I'm leaving out in my 50 zone area Pachypitum bracteosum is very frost hardy and also I've done some experimentation with this crassula. Most of my crassulas are all under cover at the moment because I've had experience in the past like crassula springtime uh, and a couple of others ones I can't remember that it died uh, with the frost and so this one I keep here. There's another one over on this side which I bought. The two of them I bought them at the same time and this one is out in the open here and the one that's in the covered area seems to be healthier compared to this one but still lots of babies popping out but that one's going to be exposed to the element and the other one over there is going to grow for me to get some babies come springtime at the moment they're actually growing in um, when it does get hot the hotter it gets the they go into dormancy so it's best to protect them a lot of uh, the crassulas I've got now are actually flowering or about to flower but I keep them here in my 50 zone but uh, you've got top shelf second third fourth uh, there's a fifth one in the bottom but they're on the fourth shelf here so I've got lots of crassulas I got crassula blue over variegated so that's only a few years few months old so that's why I'm keeping it here and then now there's so there's new leaf growing on the side there in the bottom crassula Morgan's Beauty that one is budding up is about to flower as well I've got Christine or Christina over there uh, crassula languinosa so there's a whole heap of crassula here even the crassula springtime up in the corner there was thick of uh, buds it's budding up for flowering so they're actually quite uh, beautiful when they flower and a few more across the line in the corner there and also a cotyledon so cotyledon or cotyledon and another cotyledon in here uh, in the 50 zone under protected 
going back to my covered my outdoor covered zone now this shelf here doesn't get wet at all so it doesn't get rained on and this is where I keep the new ones the new babies that I can control in watering so we got Ionium, Pachypitum, Crassula, Echeveria, Sedum. That one is Portulaca molokiniensis. That's not supposed to be here, but I've got one that's growing inside. And so I thought I'll do an experiment to see if this one can survive being tucked in in the corner. So it's still sort of protected. But if we do get some really cold days, I just want to see if it can survive our winter weather. So this little cute one is hiding a tick. And look at the tick it's got on the back. So it's actually a lithops or one of those stone plant. I think they're called lithops, aren't they? I have some more down in the bottom here. So again, Sinisho on the right hand side there. So another lithops and more lithops. And then the other one is something Nelly. That one there, can't remember the name, but anyway, stone plants. And they are doing really well in here. I even uh, brought some inside just to see if uh, it will fare better. So those ones are just echeverias and more other plants there. So these are fairly new plants in here, which is less than a year old. So I'm keeping them all here. Uh, now go back to the lithops that I brought inside. This one, I brought it inside because I thought it might die out here. And as it turned out, they don't like it at all outside. I mean, inside the house and it started wrinkling. So I brought it out here. This has been sitting here now for two days. So look at that. All wrinkled, oh, only a couple of them. But I thought three. That's all wrinkly. Oh, four. <laughs> I'm counting more. <laughs> so that's wrinkled, 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 wrinkled. So anyway, compared to the counterpart that's out in the open here or my outdoor covered area, so they need a lot of air circulation, I believe. That's why uh, the ones that are in here are actually doing better compared to the ones inside. So hopefully they don't die from the frost. And oh, that one is also a Senecio Haworthii or Woolly Senecio. I'm not too sure where, where I should have that, but I, but I thought I'll keep it here. Oh, that one doesn't look very nice. It's quite soft. I think ah there you go it needs water so let me feel yep that's really really light so all that wrinkly going wrinkle uh, it's to indicate that that one needs some water so I have to soak that maybe in a couple of days when it warms up a little bit so the forecast was about uh, minimum of four degrees so I'm gonna pick that day to water it so it doesn't die from the frost so these little babies here are fairly new but this tacitus uh, bella i've actually had that for a couple of years and that one as well doesn't mind the frost during summer this year we had that day, those days where it got really really hot this particular plant i brought it inside because i thought it might do better inside because the temperature went up to 42 degrees centigrade uh, celsius and I brought it inside within two hours it started melting so that's why you can see all the edges there that's damaged from too much moisture inside the house did not like it at all it's like it being in a sauna so I quickly brought it out here again and then now it's recovering so I'm leaving it there I also have a lot of aloes in here which I've uh, been growing for a few years now and they're doing really well this little burrito it's two years old but it's just so slow it's just so slow in growing so I can't even get a cutting because it's just so slow so this is the second winter it will have uh, with me so I'm leaving it there and again Crassula frosty hiding in the hiding in the corner there's a lot of Haworthias in here different types of Haworthia you got your zebra Haworthias and those um, soft 
big leaf hawothia it's quite large that one there look at that but just gorgeous and hawothia tangkata i've had that for a few years and this is where they've been living for a few years except for a couple of new ones that's got labels that i just acquired less than a year old and i find that they're actually quite frost hardy so i'm gonna have to find somewhere out in my 50 zone over there maybe put up a shelf again and put them there so i can put other frost sensitive plants in here now let's go to uh frost damaged ones this one's i've got another one that's still in my 50 zone at the moment this is crassula capitella variegata it's quite frost hardy but i just want to play it safe so i've got one exposed under experimentation and then this one is i'm um, securing and leaving it here now in saying that this is ionium lily pad and as you can see it says frost hardy to minus seven i took it out there and it melted okay i'm gonna take this out here so you can see that minus four we had a couple of days ago affected it did not like it at all over there so now it's still alive so look healthy babies in there so now I quickly brought it back here and I put it back into its spot so I just want to see what happens when at minus four so that's why you need an area well for me anyway I need an area where I can acclimatize them because I don't know what sort of growing condition they've been grown in in those um, succulent farms so all the new ones that I get that are not acclimatized uh to our weather or not grown where we live in my area then i put it all in here so where they can be nice and safe oh look i've got another crassula capitella variegata check out the difference of the colors that one and this one in my 50 zone now i'm going to show you a crassula capitella campfire that i've had for uh, a couple of years this is also uh, covered and that one is already three years old it has suffered some damage from the frost in previous years so now uh, it was growing out in the open and then now I brought it here um, at the end of autumn oopsie hang on trying to move it anyway so that one now has gone all nice and red in the past that has melted and it came back in springtime so as this agave atenuata this is my last agave that's left i've got three plants the two died this one has got lots of babies and this is now the third winter as well and it has been affected by the frost as you can see that little mark there so I just really like them but anyway they grow quite big but so here's hoping that that will survive this third year now of frost in this covered outdoor area now this one is a cutting of euphobia milli milli vanilli okay over there so they're cuttings from that one there this is also covered See the cobwebs up the top? You can't see it. It's a good thing you can't see it. So this is also under covered area. So they have survived minus seven out in the open in the past. These very same plants. And last year I actually took them inside, inside the house. And this year I took them out again in springtime. And then now this year I got a couple of them inside. So now this one's I'm torturing them and leaving supposedly this one and this one's going to get tortured and that one's supposed to go inside but I still haven't taken it inside and there's a slight frost damage or oh, got kissed by the frost but it's still doing fine so I think I'm going to leave those two and still take that one inside when I remember this crassula now I just bought this recently this is only like a couple of weeks old with me and I'm trying to grow it so I can have something nice and red like this one here that's been grown outdoors out in the open it's just so gorgeous but now this one I have to be careful so if we do get minus seven I have to put it somewhere up high so it doesn't melt with the frost now this one crassula ripple jade 
I've given some cuttings of this one to my mother-in-law. Where she's got it is quite protected, but it's out in the open as well, like an outdoor alfresco area that she's got, and it has survived. So this one now, I've been bringing them inside and taking them out, so too much work. So I thought, Lisa, I'm going to leave you there. If you die, you die. I'm not going to get you anymore. And also, this one is a multicaulis. This is a... Echeveria Multicaules. It's just so gorgeous and beautiful. Look at the colors. It was much redder before, uh, a few weeks ago, before I put it here because it was out in the open. Then now I put it in this corner here that's protected and it started going green again, but that's all right because it's just going to go red again when uh, summertime or springtime comes when we have uh, no threat of frost then I can bring it outside and it'll be just as beautiful as ever plus I'm gonna get a whole heap of babies so as you can see there's lots and lots and lots of babies and also this one this is a fire sticks this is now the third or second winter actually the first year sorry third winter the first winter I had it was uh, it melted on me the second winter I had it growing in here so i had it outside where uh my 50 zone area but it's a different arrangement i've got back then and it just melted but then come springtime it still came back and then now the last year i kept it here in the same spot in winter it still melted uh so it was nice and thick and uh quite tall and now uh this is the third year so it melted but it came back and now this is the third year with that minus four we had it got red and i can feel that this actually became a stronger plant so here's hoping that this year will survive this winter so that i can have lots of babies next year so uh inside there you can see it's green but the one that are sort of exposed to the sun so it gets morning sun here but no afternoon sun so that's where she's gonna stay now this is my cactus area here in my outdoor covered area Lots of cactus in here I've had for a few years, for a couple of years, because I've only been growing succulents for about four years now. And a lot of them are still new, as you can see that one, these are only bought a few weeks ago. I still have to put it in a pretty pot or repot it, but the rest of them I've had for about three years. So these are my oldies, but goodies. And that one there, the fussy wussy one, that one, this year, I don't know what came over me or actually last summer, I had this great idea that I thought I'll bring it out into my open cactus area, growing area. And I took it out and it only lasted a couple of days, <laughs> a couple of days later it started melting. And then so I brought it back here. Uh, back to its original spot and all of a sudden it popped out some babies so there's got two babies now and now she's doing all right so hopefully is there more at the back i think there's more in the back hang on hang on oh look at that there's another one at the back there so i don't want to go in there because i'm gonna get prick but that is what do you call that powder puff cactus okay go back hang on i'll just leave that there for now and this one look at me grabbing this this is the same plant as that one it is called I am looking at the label Gymnocalicio Mihanovic Chiai so this one I bought in one of those colored so that's the when I bought it so this one when I bought it it was like that stuck on top and what I did is just chop it off and now I did that at the end of autumn so just to find out if it will survive and there's roots underneath so now I'm gonna wait so I'm just letting it sit on top of that pot that pretty pot and hopefully that will grow uh, in springtime or when it gets warmer and it's just so pretty i just love the burgundy color now this one is a kalankowi marmorata and yep marmorata marmorata okay now <laughs> that one i actually brought it inside and it started uh growing mold and not actually mold it was aphids all of a sudden got attacked by aphids so I just see you can still see from inside there look 
they're all dried up now but this was just covered with aphids while it's inside so I brought it outside here again and I sprayed it with dishwashing liquid just to kill the aphids and now it's recovered and there's new ones popping out it's only been here for a week or two I have to keep an eye on the weather so it's gone minus four and it was fine but I think when it gets colder than minus four then I might have to bring it inside but for now it's just gonna stay here so as with this Kalankoe Baharensis oak leaf this Baharensis I have killed in the past at minus 10 minus 7 it was still okay but minus 10 uh, did not do too well it just melted so this is actually a new plant about two years old now this one or I should say two winters this is the second winter I've got this and also in here more crassula pretty crassulas I'm getting wet it's raining see look it's raining Whew. oh you can see if you can see the water droplets so it's raining it's raining man anyway this one's now peanut cactus gorgeous peanut cactus and standard peanut cactus this is crassula uh, variegated crassulas perforata I think variegata and so pretty the colors it gets afternoon sun and look at the nice bright color that one is a different uh, crassula but again um, it's just so pretty okay that one is just a um, sedum uh, Aurora jelly bean but it's Aurora one this one is um, what are you what's your name I forgot now this is golden goddess uh, sedum golden goddess and I've had them die on me in the past so now this one's gonna stay here I actually have one outside there let's just go quickly out in the rain see that one is a golden goddess now that one still alive hard but that got hit by the frost it's melting on the edge there now I'm getting wet so I better go inside so let's go run 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 baby oh look pretty pretty uh, that is Setora Echeveria Setora look more pretty plants and one wet head okay now in here um, look at that gorgeous gorgeous look how nice and red that is nice and ripe look at that Rasula ovata golum or something like that and this one now is uh, what are you this is the same plant as this gets afternoon sun that one not far from it about two meters away is that one there is just uh, again aloe juvena as well and that one is all green look at the difference there you go position 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 so now this one's now are Captopetalum pentandrum superbum must my superbum that's my mother's stock so I'm getting a whole heap of babies from that cuttings and these ones are Echeveria blade runner that used to be huge it was like that big and now I'm shrinking it make it smaller so as this one now this is looking like a timeout now this is actually Gansen Echeveria Gansen and it's really dry so you can see the soil and look aphids aphids but anyway I've already sprayed the aphids now that one is really dry soil so in winter if you're not sure whether you should water your plants or not or well with me I'm not sure whether I should water it or not so what I do is I don't water it in winter until springtime when it's warm now in here is the same uh, sedum something morgiano stale I think this is a burro stale that I had growing in my 50 zone during the summer months because they don't like the heat so I put them out in my 50 zone at least is partially protected from the Sun and it did really well and it went all nice and yellow and ripe but then now we had the minus four and you can see the effects of the minus four it's gone white so that's uh, frostbite bitten so look it's even look at that 
got killed by the frost just the top of it which is a good thing so now I put it back here where it was growing for a couple of years isn't that gorgeous that is halbingeria echeveria halbingeria otero so I like the way it's just growing thick so now three years old I started from one plant and look at it now that is absolutely beautiful it's like cascading crassula strayi the first year I had this, it died with the frost, but I was able to get some babies and brought it inside. And the next year, it actually, springtime, it had some babies and I propagated, this is actually now a propagated one from the babies. And it seemed to be frost hardy now. So I can feel it's getting thicker. So it depends as to the condition of the plants you're getting or you're planting as to how it was grown when before you purchase it. Well, from my experience, I have a lot of plants that died on me previously because I did not acclimatize them. So this is my way of acclimatizing my plants and I have been successful. So the first year I got lots that died, but now ever since then I haven't had a single one that died on me except the cuttings. So of a couple of Ioniums and a couple of varieties of Echeveria that are actually quite uh, frost sensitive or frost, not frost hardy at all. Uh, speaking of not frost hardy, this is now was growing in my 50 zone a couple of days ago. And when we had minus four, this is Graptopetalum pentandrum superbum. And it got hit by the frost, so it, it's sort of dark on the edges. And yeah, translucent when, okay, I'm trying to look for a translucent area. So something like that in the bottom here, look. So that got hit by the frost, but instead of leaving it where it was, I quickly brought it in here um, just so it will still have time to sort of thaw itself out and recover. So that will still survive this winter even if we get colder winters, uh, colder days, as long as it's in the outdoor covered zone. Casula volkensii. I'm not sure whether it's going to die on me or not, but anyways, it's going to stay there. And look at the rain. I look out and I see the rain as it pours on my plants. I still got big area over there that I have to landscape okay I better go inside now because I'm getting wet and I better finish off this long video oh look at all the violet queen gorgeous oh my variegated polydonis oh my camera's wet